Hi guys and welcome to violence analysis number nine. In this one I'm going to look at something that happened in uh, August of 2017, so it's a little while ago, but I wanted to wait until I got more information before doing this analysis. It pretty much made the rounds uh, of the internet back then, but uh, I wanted to see more of what happened and I've mi finally managed to find this video here that shows in detail everything that happened. So. The guy you are seeing sitting here, uh, the, the big guy here sitting uh, down here on the stairs, is uh, a Russian powerlifter, Andrei Drakhev, who uh, who's apparently was a world champion in powerlifting, bodybuilding, and so on. And he, he uh, is going to face the guy here in the white shirt, who uh, is coming up, uh, coming walking up here, who is uh, Anarzyanov, who apparently is a mixed martial art fighter or enthusiast, that wasn't quite clear. Apparently what happened, and I hope you're sitting down for this one, is that they were in a bar and getting into an argument about which was better, mixed martial arts or powerlifting uh, for fighting. And apparently Zironov here uh, would, uh, wouldn't, wouldn't quit, wouldn't, uh, wouldn't talk, uh, you know, stop talking, and, and he slapped Trashev in the face a couple times and basically challenged him to a fight right then and there, which is what we're seeing here now. So... There's no audio, so I have no idea what is being said, but uh, I think the images will speak for themselves. Now, here you can see that there's uh, apparently some woofing going on, but uh, not much uh, action. Uh, and here Zero is going to do something really funky. I don't know what he's, he wants to do here, um, but we're going to see this pretty bizarre spinning thing here. Uh, it's not like he doesn't know how to fight, but uh, he's apparently feeling out a little bit and uh, and acting out. So the, the main thing, and I'm going to pause it here. So if you see what happens here, so here he provokes him as, and see if I can zoom in and show you guys what's going on. So what you're seeing here is, is pretty clear. He's putting his hand up onto his, in, you know, in front of his face and sticking his chin out and basically daring, um, daring Drakhev to, to hit him, which uh, is many things, but it is not self-defense. That is the key point of this video is that this is an example of uh, mutual combat both men agree to fight they are not acting in self-defense that is a key point so anything that happens here is not covered by self-defense no matter how much they would like it so there's there are several reasons for that um there they had ample time to get away before the fight but also during the fight at this point either man can just start running away in any direction and he has an exit and he can just get clear so it doesn't matter what zero and said it doesn't matter what drag says uh, it's uh, it's not it's not self-defense this is clearly mutual combat and as a result you know whatever happens next is going to be treated very differently uh, by the law than if it's self-defense so um, and here obviously we're going to get the, the obligatory taking off the t-shirt also so um, there's some woofing going on apparently uh, because the fight doesn't start right away. But um, you're going to see that it's going to happen real soon. Now here again, you, you see uh, it doesn't look like uh, right away it's gonna, something's going to happen. But here's a sucker punch or a sucker kick re basically. And then we get a really sloppy uh, uh, bum, bum rush and then the takedown. So I'm going to rewind that so you see a little, little bit better. So this is this is one of the typical mistakes that big guys make uh, uh, when they're used to always having uh, the power advantage or the weight advantage. So you see Zironov is here stepping in with a high kick, but it gets blocked. So he doesn't land, uh, but it, he does uh, manage to get Drakhev a little bit back. Uh, Drakhev responds typically, and you're going to see that he's going to do pretty much the dumbest thing that you can do. It's just run straight forward and and hope for the best there's no setup and from the distance that he's at so he's relatively far away there's a lot of distance between them it's going to be very predictable um, and you'll see the result uh, Zironov just ducks underneath and goes for the takedown he picks him up lifts him and uh, that's all she wrote so um, the main thing I want you to see is that even despite the weight difference which is very clear to see here Zironov still managed manages to take um, um, he still manages to take Drakhev down. So and you see there's a big takedown here. And then we're going to have some groundwork here. This isn't all that impressive. But um, on the other hand, again, this, this, this is a, this is a 
quote unquote real fight so there's no rules um so uh one of the things that happens is that it looks a lot sloppier than uh in in uh, pro in a professional fight so the main thing that i want to point out here and again this is, I've, I've been i've written about mixed martial arts and self-defense the differences between both for a long time one of the points is that there are weight classes and there are reasons for that now one of the things you see here is that Drakov is a big guy and Zirinov is not of the same weight class so he's uh he has him here in uh in inside control but he can't keep it just because Drakov is a big guy and he managed to get back up again not he's not very efficient but he's strong and he's big um but nevertheless Zirinov takes him down again and they end up uh fighting uh, again getting to uh, side control now Zirinov isn't doing all that much. He seems to be waiting or tiring Drakev out, but it isn't doing all that much. And here you can see that Drakev doesn't really know what to do. He's trying to use his hands a little bit to uh, have some sort of hold or control of uh, Zirinov's head, but he's not doing all that much um, that you can consider effective. Now he does get up eventually, you'll see that in a bit, but uh, there's not much going on here. Now the main thing I want to point out is while you're watching this, look at how long this has been going and nobody is intervening. Everybody is just looking at it and these guys are just standing there. So um, this this is, this is again, uh, as long, I'm going to pause it here, as long as you are not attacked by bystanders or somebody's friend, it, it, is uh, going to get involved in it when he sees that that, uh, that you're beating up uh, his buddy. Um, as long as that doesn't happen, this kind of groundwork isn't really as much of an issue. So apparently these uh, bystanders, the friends of both men, decided to not get involved. And you'll see in a little bit that that wasn't necessarily the case. So um, here Azirinov gets reversed, but um, he manages to uh, to still get out of it. And uh, you'll see Drakhev, uh, he can't keep it, uh, he can't keep position. But there's not much effective striking or anything going on. There's no uh, there's no attempts at, at any sort of finishing hold or, or choke or, or uh, um, lock or an anything basically to finish off this uh, this uh, grappling on the, on the ground. So there's a little bit of striking here, but it's not effective. Now, here you see we, we we get pretty much to the final part there's going to be a cut here there's going to be an edit in the footage which i don't know why it happened but once again see what happens here so here you see zero enough uh, bending f bending over to pick up his shoe and put it back on again if we are talking pure self-defense uh where your life is at stake now why would anybody give you the opportunity to do that drakev could just walk forward and kick him in the face and and be done with it he doesn't so once again, this is a mutual combat. This is not self-defense. And this is one of the things, one of the ways in, in, in which it manifests itself, the differences between between both. Um, also, it also means that Rakhev is, is uh, apparently not uh, willing to uh, to take it to that point where he could just kick him in the face. Um, again, everybody fights for different reasons and everybody fights a different way. But uh, I can assure you that some of the people that I know and so and many of the videos that I've seen of uh, people ending up in fights like this, they, they, they wouldn't have any um, any compulsion not to kick you in the face. They would just go for it. So take it for what it's worth. But uh, I would definitely not advise you to just uh, casually pick up your shoe and put it back on again, hoping you'll be left alone. Again, here standing on one foot. So why wouldn't your opponent attack you then? So here you see this, they, they have seems to be walking away. We're gonna get the edit here. So all of a sudden the, the video is gonna jump forward in time. I don't know how much time, no idea what happens next, but this is pretty much the end of the fight. So you can see that um, from here, it's gonna pick up again. I'm gonna pause it so I can reframe it a little bit better. I'll rewind a little bit to give you guys a better idea of um, what what's going on here. And there we go. So Zirinov is going to throw the first kick. It isn't really effective. And then we get to the one that is going to be effective, the spinning back kick. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see it better. So what we have here is the first a big step forward. So he's going to tape, uh, take a big step forward with his right leg to suddenly get closer, 
knowing uh, probably full well and estimating that Drakhev is gonna uh, continue going backwards. So it takes the big step forward, swings through with his hips, rotates fully. And here you see one of the hallmarks of an untrained fighter. You see, you're gonna see that Drakhev is gonna extend his arms into a flinch response to ward off the kick. Unfortunately, that actually opens up the path for the heel to his face. So this is a very instinctive response, but in this case, it backfires completely. And you see that the, the kick follows through and lands perfectly on the head. Now, one of the key differences between um, mixed martial arts and self-defense, and again, is that there are no rules. And um, one of the rules that you have in a sporting contest is that obviously the safety of the fighters is important. Now, many fans don't really know this, but mixed martial arts judges, um, sorry, referees actually have def different criteria for how they act depending on how you fall down when somebody hits you in the face or kicks you in the face. So the knockdown is, is qualified in, depending on different criteria, how you fall. If you just crumble or if you, uh, if you are still reacting, if you make a movement to break your fall or if you're just starched and you fall over and that's it. And depending on how they see you fall, they will actually decide to either let it go on a little bit longer or intervene right away. What we see here is what is called getting starched. Um, I call it felling the tree, which is that basically uh, upon impact, um, what you're going to see is that Drakhev's body is going to stiffen up and his feet stay planted and then he just keels over and hits the floor. So when this happens, uh, I've mentioned this before, but one of the one of the issues is that as this happens here, so as he makes his downward movement, his head is actually going to stay a little bit forward and uh, and not follow quite as quickly because the neck vertebrae vertebrae here are going to actually allow the movement of the head staying forward, and this has to do with inertia and about a, a lot of different stuff. But what it boils down to, and I'm going to show it here so you see it better. So from a standing position, he's going to fall over. Now the moment that he's going to hit the floor, his head will actually be more or less here because of the flexibility you have in the neck. Now what happens next is that his shoulders are going to hit the floor first, and that is going to arrest all that movement. And then that movement, uh, the, 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 the movement of the fall is actually going to get transferred into the neck vertebrae and the head is going to rotate around the axis and slam into the floor, back of the head first, which is actually the most vulnerable part. And that is what causes uh, some of the nastiest knockouts. If you, if, a, if an MMA judge sees, sees a guy fall like that, he typically immediately stops the fight because that is how you get brain damage. Now, that happens when you're in the ring where the floor is padded and it's actually quite a, um, a flexible floor it's, it's not as hard as it looks so it absorbs the impacts better this is not the case here they're fighting outside these are bricks lying on the ground so when this knockout happens here this is actually quite damaging now Zirinov is, is going to follow up and um, you'll see here that Drakhev is, is not completely knocked out but he gets up he gets kicked first and then he gets kicked again here and here you see a similar thing. He wasn't fully upright yet, so he didn't have the opportunity to go in a fully rigid upright position. But he's going to do the same thing here, fall down. And I'll see if I can slow it frame by frame. So you can, again, here you see him falling down. So he's going to hit butt first. So this is his butt is here hitting the floor. What you'll see next, and he has this curve here in his spine that's going to take some of the energy of a fall but his head is still in this position, as I mentioned before. So his head is still in a forward position uh, because of the flexibility of the spine. Same thing's gonna happen when his shoulders hit the floor, it's gonna snap down and the back of his skull is going to get slammed into the floor. So we're gonna see this slowly and this is where it happens. His arms are a little bit in the way, uh, so you don't see it well, but here you see that his head just basically goes straight down and crashes into the floor. And I'll, I'll replay that se sequence from the beginning so you see how quickly it happens. Um, and then obviously what happens next. So here you got the kick landing, goes to the ground, you get kicked once, get kicked again, hits the floor again. And here you see Zirinov five times in a row just basically unloading on, uh, on um, Drakhev. Now, 
what you should know about these kinds of strikes is that um, they are braced strikes. What that means is you've got the target that is here. You've got his fist that is going to come straight down into it. So he's got gravity with uh, on his side helping him. But there's also something bracing the target, and that is a floor in this case. So the street here outside is not yielding. That means that all the energy of that punch is going into the target there's no there's no movement in the in the head so it, it's like um, getting struck between a hammer and an anvil that keeps all the energy in the target that uh, the hammer strikes and that's what, what's going on here so these are devastating blows and that is after he kicked the guy in the head after the guy already fell down and hit his head twice so uh, what happens here is is, is quite uh, not, not just overkill but also uh, extremely damaging and then you see that this is basically the fight is over. Now, what happened uh, is that um, from, uh, you don't see it here, obviously, but uh, Zironov eventually ran away. Drakhev was uh, basically dead before he managed to, to uh, be uh, be taken to the hospital. Uh, apparently, he, they tried to resuscitate him for, for a while, but uh, he didn't make it. So the main point, and again, you see here, that uh, Zironov is, is walking around here. He eventually tries to flee um, and is uh, later on arrested. I don't remember the timeline exactly, but that's what happened. And here you see people uh, just uh, walking up and, and getting involved here. So again, you see Zironov is he's woofing. He's uh, doing the, the victory lap, so to speak. And uh, I think it's at this point that he kind of realizes that he's screwed up and uh, it's time to leave. Now, here's my point, um, several things that I want to mention. So first of all, what a, what a stupid way to go to jail, because that, that's what happened to Zirinov. Um You go to jail for a stupid argument over which is better, mixed martial arts or powerlifting. Um, it's, it's like which is better, Star Trek The New Generation or the original series, which is better. Star Wars or Star Trek, it's it's nonsense. I know a lot of a lot of nerds are now going 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 to go ape shit about me saying that, but this is a kind of silly argument that is not worth your life. So that is one. The second point I want to make is that this is, like I said before, this isn't self-defense. This has nothing to do with self-defense. So if you get into a fight like this, you cannot claim self-defense. Uh, you weren't attacked. You were provoking somebody else. You had plenty of chances to get away. You chose to stay. You were also not defending somebody else. There was nothing uh, keeping you there other than your own ego or your own... Uh, uh, more primitive part of your brain. So that is uh, the second point. And the third point I want to make is, uh, and I've, I've written about this before in my article, High Kicks Don't Work in the Street, is that um, a lot of people have a lot of opinions about what does and doesn't work in the street. And one of them is high kicks. I think that's not it. I've used it. I've known plenty of people who've also used high kicks. And here you, spe you see a, a spinning heel kick uh, that actually knocks a, a guy out who outweighs the guy doing the kicking significantly and it still works so my point is that you shouldn't discard techniques simply because you don't have the ability to pull them off that doesn't mean that a spinning uh, heel kick is a good technique to use for self-defense or in the street but it, what it basically means is that don't discount it don't think that it can't work it's a huge difference between saying that and saying that it's something you should train self-defense that's not what i said i think it's a, a huge mistake to simply disqualify techniques because you don't believe in them you don't think they can work and so on um, based on only a little bit of training a little bit of information now everybody makes their own choices when it comes to training you don't have to uh, start doing the spinning heel kick uh, because you saw it in this video here and you saw it worked once uh, that, that doesn't mean that you have to go down that route. However, my main point is that try to avoid getting into a situation where you automatically discard something you see. Uh, or um, if you decide, well, I'm not going to train to do a technique like that, um, maybe also incorporate learning how to defend against it. There's nothing wrong with you not throwing spinning kicks in, the, in, in cell defense. There is something wrong with you saying, well, I should never even consider that this could be potentially a danger. Don't have to spend an enormous amount of time on that because if you look at the number of people who will throw spinning kicks at you, it's going to be a, a minority compared to 
the number of, of guys who will throw a big haymaker with their right arm at you. So then we're playing percentages here. So uh, defend against high percentage attacks first and then work your way down to the lower percentage moves. But eventually you want to make sure that you are versatile enough in what you do to defend against uh, as many as, as possible, um, as many attacks as possible that you might encounter. So that's the last point that I wanted to make. Um, wrapping up things here, because this ran a little bit longer than I wanted to, but I wanted to make sure that you guys could, could see this. Uh, and that's why I keep on rolling the tape. Just let this image burn into your mind. And, and next time you're in a bar, something happens and you uh, you're maybe you're a little bit drunk or you're upset or uh, you know you're going to do a fight at home and you want to take it out on somebody maybe just let it go let it slide leave everybody else alone don't pick fights and 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 get home safe safe and sound and don't end up in jail like zero not did basically over a stupid stupid argument so at that i'm going to finish up i hope you guys um found value in this video i'm gonna post a bunch more as always, uh, go to Patreon uh, slash patreon.com slash Wim de Mere, and uh, you can see all the other videos there. And also, if you have comments, please leave them there. Thanks, and take care.